We all know what a biplane is. It's a plane with two wings, one above the fuselage and the other below, which is one of the possible configurations in a fixed-wing aircraft. But why aren't they so common today? And why were they used in the past? We will answer these and many other questions about biplanes in this video. Welcome to Joyplanes RC2. A biplane is an airplane with two wings, one above the other of almost the same size. But if a plane has two wings and they are on the opposite sides of the fuselage, then it's a plane with tandem wings. It's something different. Don't get it wrong. But today we're going to talk only about biplanes. Everything goes back to the beginning of aviation. The Wright brothers were the first to fly a motorized plane or at least as the official version, since some people say it was Alberto Santos Dumont with a plane called 14 bis. But we're not talking about that now. The plane developed by the Wright brothers was called the Wright Flyer, and it was a biplane. Since the materials available at the time were wood and fabric to cover the wings, they needed to make a fairly strong and lightweight structure. The configuration of two wings, one above the other, has the advantage of having more structural strength if they are reinforced using some pillars and tension lines. The other important advantage was the lift generated by two wings compared to one wing. You can fly at slower speeds and with shorter wings, something that came in handy especially if the engines from before didn't have much power either. But placing a second wing doesn't double the amount of lift generated by the wings. In fact, the lift is just 20% higher. This deficiency is because of the proximity and position of the wings. Both interfere with each other in terms of aerodynamics. Before the Wright brothers, mankind was already using very large kites that were modified in gliders large enough to carry a person. In 1804, George Kelly is the first to build a glider that could fly for a few seconds carrying a person. George Kelly was an English engineer who managed to study the flight of birds and understand it to apply it on the first machine heavier than air. It is called that since, by then, there were already hot air balloons and similar airships labeled lighter than air aircrafts, but nothing like an airplane. This man is a true pioneer of the aviation. In fact, he was the one who identified the forces acting on the flight. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. He also performed some aerodynamic experiments and discovered that a wing with a curvature was more efficient in producing lift. In fact, the Wright brothers studied his work and research to build their plane. But we can talk about this whole story in another video. Let's carry on with the biplanes. It turns out that the biplane was the most structurally safe configuration, and that guaranteed the flight of the machine. Then the First World War came. Some people tried to redesign these airplanes with only one wing, but it was very difficult to take off. This happened for two main reasons. The engines at the moment were not powerful enough, as the engines of today, to propel the aircraft at higher speed. At the same time, the engines were somewhat heavy, so removing a wing reduces that little extra lift that it can provide, so the airplane needs more speed and less weight to take off. Something that could not be done with the engines at that time. But it was possible to make a single wing airplane as we know them today, but the wings should be a little longer. This will surely make the airplane fly. The problem is that long wings are weak and not very resistant to aggressive maneuvers, and to be used in the war with these aggressive maneuvers was not recommended. It is possible to make the wings shorter, but remember, more speed is needed to keep flying. Now, if you want to keep the wings shorter, you will need more speed, and that requires a powerful engine. So overall, it was all about having a better engine, something that will eventually come as the engines were in constant development. Remember that the materials used were still wood and fabrics. Biplanes were the standard. 
after the First World War, aluminum alloys began to be used in aircraft structures, reinforcing the structural performance and allowing the design of monoplanes to be usable. There were also new engines with a better power-to-weight ratio. After all, the two wings have disadvantages that we haven't mentioned yet. The first is the increase in aerodynamic drag. One element that creates a lot of drag in these planes is the bracing required to hold the two wings together. There is also the aerodynamic interference generated between the two wings. To mitigate this a little, a wing is placed a little bit separated from the other in the horizontal and vertical axis. To answer the question of why biplanes are not so common today, I think the answer is clear. Biplanes are not the most efficient flying machines. Some biplanes are still in use in aerial displays and they are preserved as an icon of the beginning of the aviation. They also look cool and different from the other airplanes, but the truth is that it's not practical and efficient to fly a biplane. Again, this video took me a long time to finish, especially for all the graphics and animations involved. I hope you really liked it, and if you did, you can support my work by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, and even considering subscribing. If you want to take it a step farther, you can support me financially via a donation, link in the description. I will really appreciate it. For now, I'll see you in the next video.